Well, now that we have the so-called normal joint deformations happening with the armature, we'd like to add some control to do rubber hosey animation. For instance, so that we can, with the calf, with the leg in this position, bend the calf out a little bit to get a nice curve between this point and that point. Well, armature bones, even though we do have the B bones, aren't really designed to curve around. And so we have to modify the calf mesh with something that is designed to curve in such a manner. And if you guess that we need to use a curve modifier, then you've guessed correctly. Uh, that is indeed what we need. However, we'll see that there are some problems from using a curve directly. First of all, let's try doing that right now just by adding a curve modifier. So let's um, snap the cursor somewhere here, which looks like it should be where the calf is, and add a curve. And since we want it straight in the default mode, we can just hit Shift H to give us those nice straight handles and rotate it so it lines up with the calf. And then maybe scale it down a little bit. Now let's see what happens if we add a curve modifier to our armature with our new curve. Sorry, to our mesh. So if you select the mesh and we click on add modifier and we can click on curve for our modifier and type in the name of our new curve there. I'll call this calf curve. So we'll write calf curve. And instantly you see that the mesh translated down. And that's because the curve modifier um, uses the object center offsets for the two objects, the curve and the mesh, and so it will create an offset here. Um, if we click on curve stretch, it'll stretch the entire mesh to fit in that space, which is not really ideal. And if we don't hit, hit on curve stretch, we get some unwanted results where the curve doesn't deform the mesh where we want to. So applying the curve to a mesh is really kind of a tricky a tricky way to do things. It's creating a very nice deformation. It's just uh, lovely to look at, but it's just not doing it in the right place. So applying the curve modifier to the mesh directly isn't really going to work. Even if we could limit the effect of the modifier onto one part of the mesh, we would still be deforming it in the wrong way. So how do we do this? If we can't apply a curve modifier directly to the mesh? Well, we can try to modify something else with the curve and then use that modifier on the mesh. Especially useful if the thing that we're deforming with the curve is something that you can limit the influence of in a useful way. And the answer to that in Blender is a lattice. So instead of just adding a curve, we'll add two things. We'll add a curve, bingo, and we'll add a lattice. Now if you use the curves um, a curve stretch feature for the modifier. It'll stretch the lattice to fit the curve. But if we make the lattice the same length as the curve by default by scaling it up, then we don't have that problem. So we can make this Shift H there to make that straight. And now if we apply the curve, let's call the curve calf curve. And we'll call the lattice calf lattice. So let's apply this curve modifier to the lattice.
and we can't really see an effect right now. So before I do that, I'm going to scale the lattice to match more or less the dimensions of the calf. And actually we'll rotate both and scale them together. A little bit down, move them a little bit up, roughly like so. It doesn't have to be completely precise. And now let's um, if we look at the local axes of the of the lattice, we can make it skinny in its local x direction by hitting shift and moving this down like so. And we get it to fit around the, the calf nicely. Now let's get it some subdivisions. So it can take the shape of the curve nicely. There we go. Now let's apply the curve modifier to the lattice. And if we select the curve, a slight hassle in this case, and we can select these two handles here, and we'll see we're getting a nicely deforming lattice. Now if you apply the lattice modifier to the mesh, Lattice. Let's see what happens. We select the curve, bend it, and it's deforming the mesh in the right place in the right amount. It's perfect, except that you'll notice that the mesh is getting affected outside of that area. And to make that work inside the needed area, we just need to have a vertex group that limits the influence of the modifier. So, um, to paint that vertex group, I'll select the mesh, hit Control Tab, and you'll notice I already have one. It's called calflat.l, and conveniently, it's very close to the influence of the calf bone. And you can paint a vertex group quite easily by, if you didn't have it, by adding a new one. Um, calling it calf.lat um, and then just well since it's already selected it's already got the same points but I can paint it down to weight 0 for you guys to see and then you can just hit spray so it keeps on painting and then you know normally I would just hit 1 and paint it up like so so since we have a nicely serviceable vertex group here in the form of by the way shift clicking on the mesh lets you select the vertex groups that are affecting it right on that area and let's copy the name of this vertex group control C and paste it into the V group area of the modifier like so now we have the curve selected hit tab grab and we notice that we're bending precisely in the region that we want. Now we don't want to edit the curve directly in order to create our our deformation. We want to uh, do something animatable. So we actually need to add a modifier to the curve that we can animate in order to create the effect we want. And so with those two points that I require to move selected, I can hit Control H and add a hook to a new empty. And you notice it's added a hook modifier to my curve. And now that's quite perfect. If I hit tab to get out of that, select this new hook and grab it, I can move I can move my uh my mesh around like so. Now I'll snap the cursor to that to that location so I don't lose track of it. And I'll bend it and let's see what happens when we move the armature. Oh, brilliant. It's not what we want because the armature is moving relative to the location of this lattice here. And so how do we fix that? Um, well, it would work better if we bent the mesh and then moved it with the armature. And we can achieve that effect 
by rather than moving it with the armature and then trying to bend it with the lattice. We can achieve that distinction simply by moving our lattice modifier up in the modifier stack. So here it applies before the subsurf did and here it applies before the uh, armature did. And now you'll notice that the bend is independent of where the mesh is by the armature rotation. And so it's simply a matter of adjusting your stack order. Let's snap our selection back to the cursor. And you may have noticed from my snapping of the selection there that it's not quite ideal to control this with the um, empty directly because you can't hit Alt-G on the empty. If you did, it would go to the center of the coordinate system, which is really not what you want. So, how do we make that easier? Simple. We'll add a bone to the armature and we'll control the empty with the bone by simple parenting. We have the cursor snapped already to the right location, so I'll simply select the armature, hit tab, and I'll add a bone. I'll make it a little bone here, and we'll call it calfbend.l. And it won't be a child of anything. I'll hit tab, and I'll parent the empty to this bone. Now, if I select the bone, it'll cause the bending, and I can hit Alt G now, and nicely get the empty and get the empty to go back to that default location. Since I don't want to ever move this empty around, I'll lock its location so I don't end up moving it by accident. And now I have perfect freedom in using this bone. And if I grab this, I can move it around. Well, it would be nice, wouldn't it, if that control moved around with the thigh rather than stay in the default location, so the animator doesn't have to hunt for it after he's moved man candy into a, into a different position. So how do we accomplish that? Well, a simple solution might be just to parent this bone to the thigh. Let's do that and see what happens. Th sorry, to the calf. So I'll show the calf bone here. And I'll parent this empty, this uh, bone, to the calf bone. Edit mode, control P. Well, let's see. It works, right? Or does it? Let's move the foot and see what happens. Well, the problem is it's creating a default deformation every time you move the calf, which is really not what you want. So simply parenting this bone doesn't work. I'll clear the parent. But what if we had another bone that was parented to the calf that we could move? And the, the actual bone that bends the empty would just copy the relative motion of that bone and ignore its absolute motion due to the calf moving. Luckily, we can do that in Blender 2.4 quite easily. Let's copy this bone and scale it up about the cursor a little bit so we can tell it apart and parent this new bone to the calf, and then we'll call this calf bender to distinguish it. And then we'll pop out of edit mode. And what I'll do is I'll click this bone here, click this bone here, and do control C, copy location. Whoops, it jumped over. But we can make it ignore that by clicking the little local here. Once you have local clicked, you can select this bone and move it around. Nothing happens, but if you select the bone directly and move it, it causes the target to move. Let's give it the same wire sphere shape that we gave to the knee target. Like so. And let's move it into the layer where all the other bones are. It's already there. So let's get this bone out of the animator's layer so he or she doesn't have to see it while she's working. Bingo. And now we have a nice control for thigh bending, for calf bending. 
Now, the question does arise is what to parent our, um, our curve and calf to. Um, do we have problems, for instance, when we move the armature away? The answer is yes, we do, because the empty moves along with its target, but the, um, but the actual thigh and curve bone are not moving. And you could parent it to the armature object, which is perfect for a lot of situations, but it falls down in some cases, like when you do forward cycling on a walk. So you can compromise that by parenting it to that don't touch bone that we created earlier in the armature. So I'll make that don't touch bone visible again. And it's right there. Hit control tab so we can select it. And simply select this. Control P to bone and select the curve and control P to bone. And as a final step, we'll just hide the curve and the lattice objects by hitting H in the 3D viewport after selecting them. And of course the empty as well. And now we'll just click on the armature again, hide that don't touch bone, and we have a seamless setup for bending the calf in a rubber hose style. We can do the same thing for the thigh and indeed for the arms as well. You can do the rubber hose for the uh, bicep and the forearm in the same fashion. And um, by default in Man Candy, I had cleared the rotation and scale of these bones and limited their their um, the X location motion so I could bend only in this vertical axis of the uh, of, of the leg. If you do want to bend the leg out of plane you can simply unlock that X location lock and bend the leg out of plane. That's perfectly fine it was just a suggestion to the animator that I locked that particular axis of motion. I'm not going to show how to add the curve and lattice constraint to the rest of the bones of man candy because it would take far too long. I'll just save this file. And I'll load up our man candy library file. And we'll take a look at all the constraints that we have. We have a bender over here and we have one over here one over here of course the same on the left and right side and we even have ones that are hidden for instance in the neck you can actually get the neck to bend with this guy and it's working in much the same way as the other one and so that same technique with a curve and a lattice is used in multiple places in man candy skeleton and if I hit Alt H, sorry, I have to hit Control Tab, and I hit Alt H in the 3D viewport, we can see all the lattices and curves and empties that we couldn't see before that are modifying Man Candy. And you'll see that they're lined up much the way the one that we showed in the calf was along each limb and in the neck. There are other lattices that are being controlled directly by empties in different ways that I'll show later on. And just as a, a, a an aside, if we go to this layer here and hit Alt-H, you'll see all the control shapes for the bones that I normally do not have visible because it would be too much visual information in the scene for the animator to see. So. Um, that concludes the setup for Mancandy's legs.